Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as is often the case when people from the coalition come to this dispatch box, can I begin this debate by reaching over the aisle and saying to the members of the Labor Party who are here, thank you for being here. Thank you for participating in this debate, because the minister who has been leading the charge on the very topic of this debate, which is Labor's new car tax, is a no-show. A no-show. This would have to be the ninth or tenth matter of public importance that has fallen into his portfolio, but he has not shown up. And so I do genuinely say to those members of the Labor Party who are here today, I recognise it is not easy to come into this debating chamber and have to defend your hapless Minister for Climate Change and Energy, who is punishing your constituents just as much as he is punishing ours. It is a reflection not so much of you good people of the Labor Party who are in this chamber, but of the Labor leadership. Because there are some truisms when it comes to Labor's leadership, and that is they don't tell the truth, they break promises, and they love taxes. They love taxes. And there's no shortage of taxes that they've introduced. They've introduced the superannuation tax, a new franking credits tax, a tourist tax, a recycling tax, a clothing tax, an income tax, a food tax, a truckies tax. And today we debate on their latest tax, a tax on the family car and the tradies ute. Altogether, this is a $379 billion tax grab against the Australian people. This is what they do. Now, they are doing this family car tax and this tradie ute tax under the guise of a fuel efficiency standard. Now, when Labor first moved to the possibility of fuel efficiency standard last year, we responded as a coalition and said we are happy to be constructive in this debate. But we set it very clear that there are three things that needed to be balanced – price, choice and emissions. Not only did Labor fail to engage with the coalition in any discussions on this measure, not only did they fail to then not have any balance between price, choice and emissions, but they also have introduced a measure that will fail on each of those. So let us start with price. This new tax will mean that the vehicles Australians love the most simply cannot meet the standards being imposed by the Labor government. And as we know from the manufacturers, there is no chance that technology will be provided in time to ensure those standards are met. So for Australian mums and dads, for, for tradies across the country, it doesn't matter if you are looking at buying a, uh, a, a, a Ford Ranger, um, a Toyota Hilux, a Isuzu um, D-Max. I mean, they're, they're the three most popular vehicles in the country. Not one of them will be able to meet the standards being imposed by this Labor Party. And we know what's going to happen as a result. Prices go up. Prices go up, which is why it is a tax. And those members opposite know. But to their credit, they come in to defend the, the AWOL minister, who is not here to defend it himself. Now, look, I wondered if this was going to be true. And so last week, I took the time out and I visited a Toyota dealership. And of all places, I thought, why not go to the seat of McMahon? <laughs> now, this is Western Sydney, very good constituents in the seat of McMahon. But I found out that the constituents there aren't getting a fair hearing from their federal member. The federal member who happens to be missing from the chamber today, who is also missing in the seat of McMahon, 
And in going to the Western Sydney dealership, the, the Toyota dealership, one of the questions I asked was, OK, so what is the industry's projection for the impact of this tax on the Toyota Hilux? You know the answer? $15,000 extra. That's the size of the tax on the Hilux. So we, we walked down, we checked out the cars, and I was being educated. And then I came across the Land Cruiser, another vehicle Aussies love, the Toyota Land Cruiser. And I asked a simple question. How much would this Land Cruiser increase with Labor's new tax? You know what the answer was? $25,000. $25,000. And this is why the minister is the dodgiest car salesman in the country. So he says to the Australian people, have I got a deal for you? It's called a family car tax. But then, wait, there's more. He says that actually, just on running your vehicle, it's going to be cheaper by about a thousand bucks. So I looked up the detail behind this claim that he's been spruiking. And it's based on an assumption of electricity prices coming down. How about that? Down to 27 cents a kilowatt hour. That means I also visited South Australia last week. If you're in South Australia, this means that next year the promise from the same minister is that your power bills, your electricity bills, are going to almost half. Now, I don't know you, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of feeling this memory of somebody else promising a $275 reduction in household power bills. Lo and behold, you wouldn't believe who it is. It is the same dodgy car salesman who purports to be the Minister for Climate Change and Energy, who went to the last election promising households a $275 reduction in their electricity bills, and they've gone up as high as $1,000. Now he's promising them a family car tax. It's actually going to be fantastic for you. So for traders, your ute tax is going to be great, and prices are going to come down. But Australians know the truth. The leadership of this Albanese government, they do not tell the truth. They break promises. And they love their taxes. But it's not just prices. Let's just go back to the other conditions we put on engaging constructively. Choice. We know as a result of prices going up, everyday mums and dads across the country, they can't buy the vehicles they love. Tradies across the country, well, they can't buy the vehicles they need. And you know, the odd time that I'm at home, we, we all struggle to get home as MPs. When I'm at home and I have the privilege of dropping my kids to school, I tell you what, mums and dads are dropping their kids to school in the very vehicles that are going to be taxed in the midst of a cost of living crisis. This restricts choice for Australian consumers. Now, the last condition we had put on engaging constructively is that this measure at least has to reduce emissions. But what we see from the industry and the dealers across the country explaining to the Labor government that very important element of behavioural economics, that consumers will change their behaviour at times, and what's going to happen are consumers that actually have petrol vehicles right now, they're just going to keep their vehicles longer. And the longer you keep these vehicles, the more they emit. Is it any wonder that after a handful of years where a coalition government kept getting emissions down, we now have under the Albanese government emissions going up? Why? Because these sort of measures fail. This dodgy car salesman, who calls himself a minister, promised that they would have 89 per cent of all new vehicle sales by 2030. 89 per cent would be EVs. His own department says it's not going to be 89 per cent, it's going to be 27 per cent. And that is why, out of an act of desperation, the dodgy car salesman is 
putting prices up, introducing a new tax, and Australians will pay the price. Yeah. Yeah.